themselves quickly. Um, so I will start. Who can I see on the on the screen? Sorry, it's on it. Stuart, are you okay to just quickly introduce yourself and, and tell us who you are and just for a minute or so? Yeah, certainly. Hello, everybody. Uh, my name's Stuart Harper. I am running my own business, Cardano Management Services. But my background is uh, as a company secretary. Uh, so I'm now working freelance um, and I support businesses, um, often in the education sector, because that's where I've you know come from um, most recently. But, you know, outside of that as well, um, to look at all the aspects of their governance and compliance. So somebody told me the other day what I need to do is write a book about how to how to start a business because so many people start a business and then sort of get sort of stuck with a lot of the regulatory side of things. Uh, so you know maybe maybe that's a that's a project for me to go and actually write the book. But in the absence of the book, what I try and help people with is to um, manage their compliance, manage their um, their regulatory side of things, and as they get bigger and stop just being a single owner operator put in some of those structures that allow them to do that. So I'm working with a, a, with a client who um, wants to really progress their business, um, ambitions to float the company in maybe five, six, seven years time. Uh, and I'm working with them at the minute to try and um, put the structure, the underlying architecture behind it. Because what they've really got is an organization that really is reliant just on that individual to run everything. And they haven't got the underlying uh, architecture and foundations so that's me um, really good to be in the group thank you Michael for for um, for introducing me and I, there's a couple of people who I know I owe emails to got a bit behind because I had last week off and I haven't really caught up so I will get on to that today so thanks ever so much thank you thank you Stuart uh, Chris are you okay to introduce yourself Hi, thank you, Michael. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, so I'm Chris Parker. I am owner and founder of Combined Minds Continual Improvement. Um, basically, what I do is I just help. I help businesses become more efficient um, through operation, try and get operational excellence through continual improvement, project management, collaborative problem solving. Uh, it's all about stripping processes back to basics and rebuilding them. Trying to um, but trying to build the building blocks for future growth, and it's it's just about doing the simple thing. I'm trying to get people to do the simple things right. Um, a lot of what I do is it's about uh, coaching in workshops and doing detailed problem solving where you're going to find sustainable solutions. And you know what I'm trying to do at the moment is is launch a, a back to basics program with uh, frontline operation teams. So look, look forward to meeting people as I go along. I know one or two faces already that I've met, met uh, through other networks as well. Uh, but look forward to meeting everybody else uh, in due course. Thank you very much, Chris. Um, and then finally, for all the new people, Jonathan, are you okay to uh, just quickly again introduce yourself? Yes, thank you, Michael. Uh, yes, hi, uh, my name is Jonathan Hill. Uh, my business is Pierpont. Uh, we're a firm of uh, accountants based in Home Perth, but with satellite offices in uh, uh, Wakefield and Leeds. Uh, what we do is we work typically with businesses in the turnover region of 50k through to 300,000, providing the full range of accounting services uh, with an emphasis on tax uh, planning and compliance. But what we also do is we look to add value to clients in terms of uh, working to address their freedoms, i.e. Like cash, time, mind or control. Uh, one other thing we've been working on recently uh, is we've set up a, uh, a separate company called Payroll Partners, and it's a payroll bureau uh, offering uh, very affordable payroll solutions. And in the first week, we've already got three clients, and that's going well. So that's me, uh, Jonathan, of Pierpont. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Um, we've also got Edward Wynn and, and Kate Whitwam, who's, who's joined us, but obviously they can't make today. Um, but we'll introduce them next time. So um, thank you, everyone. So I'm just going to go back to um, sharing my screen now. Um, just very quickly, I was, I'm aware that the next month's meeting actually falls on a Friday around the bank holiday in August. And um, again, as I touched on earlier, it's quite a busy and it's time for everyone. So what I'm um, looking to do is actually move that meeting until early September time. Um, I'm sure a lot of people, kids and various other things that might help. Um, I'll come out with a new date for that. 
but what we're looking at maybe is two different, slightly different meetings in September. So one in early September and one towards the end, but I, I'll, I'll give them more details on that. Um, many of you, thank you for all the people who've come back to me on the how-to events. So I'm just kind of pulling all that information together at the moment. Um, the plan is we're going to do a bit of a pilot one. Um, Gemma's going to do that for us in, in August. And then we start kind of the full series of it from September. Um, we've had about maybe about 25 subject areas that we're going to look at. So as you can imagine, there's quite a lot to do there, which is going to be fantastic. The plan is potentially to maybe do one a week. Now, I know that time won't allow everyone to join every single one. But what we're going to do is they're all going to be recorded. They're all going to be saved on a private YouTube channel. So they're all people can go back and kind of um, view when, when it's convenient for them. So uh, more information coming soon on that one. I'm just trying to pull all that together at the moment. The local get togethers are um, restarting again um, from the next well, week to actually um, in the Wakefield South Leeds one. Um, obviously, I'm very aware of the um, certain restrictions that came back in last night in our local area and some, some ones. So I just need to kind of look at that in a bit more detail. Now, as far as I can see, South Leeds and Wakefield is okay at the moment. Uh, the Harrogate one will be fine as well. But I mean, the Huddersfield one might be the one that um, there was a bit of an issue with. So we'll. Um, We'll just have to have a look at that as, as we go through. You know, there's not unfortunately much we can do about that type of thing at the moment. But um, the plan is for those for those local get-togethers to be outside still. Um, again, weather permitting at the moment, um, and then later on in the year move them back inside as we were doing before, restaurant, cafe, pub type type get-togethers. Um, Another thing that we'll be uh, relaunching in about October time will be the peer group coaching and support. I know there's a, the number of you have been going through the first cohort we did with uh, Brenda and Karen. We are going to slightly change it from, from September where we're going to set up two groups, um, one which is going to be focused around coaching and one is going to be focused on support. So that exactly what that means and who that's relevant to, I, I will be, we'll be communicating that very soon. Um, but kind of tapping into the, the skill set of, of Brenda and Karen more, more relevant for the people in, in each group. Um, and then finally from me, the live videos, a number of you on this call have done the live videos with me. We've taken a bit of a break from that, but I would like to redo that with maybe the people who didn't do it in the first tranche or the newer guys as well. Look to do the, the kind of interview type live video and um, start that very, again very, very soon. Um, and then again, we'll do maybe a new series from about September, October time. And then everyone who's done it before can, can do it again, but we'll do it. We'll have a different type of theme or, or, um, a way of doing it just to keep it fresh. But I would definitely like the people who haven't done one yet. So please do let me know if you want to do one and I'll be coming out with something as well. And, and that'd be good to, to do the rest, um, as soon as possible. So the... What I wanted to very quickly cover is kind of the future plans for the Northern Affinity before I go through to kind of the details of what, what's coming from September. And the the plan is that next year will be quite a big growth year for, for the Northern Affinity. So um, what I'm going to be creating is a, a core group, an elite core group, which is essentially you guys are in it at the moment, um, non-geographically based as really. Um, now, I know most are kind of, west and slightly into north yorkshire a bit as well in the harrogate area um but the plan is that as we grow forward we're going to then set up a number of regionalized groups so um i have been approached about franchising the northern affinity um which i'm hoping will create a number of opportunities which i'll mention in a minute but my plan is not to take you guys and put you into a geographic pot i want you to be the kind of the core um people you know as a, as a if nothing else as a thank you for the people who've joined us in the, the first year or so that we're coming up to now um and it will create a number of opportunities that i've mentioned so then we like i said regionalized groups throughout the north so northern affinity uh, Man greater manchester lancashire cumbria etc etc and uh, looking at maybe about 12 different regions across the north but for you guys the idea is that one of the things that will there'll be a fallout of that there's going to be lots of opportunities in terms of lots of support that the northern affinity will need so we'll need more marketing support as a business and administration finance whatever it might be um and my model is is an outsource model i, I don't particularly want to go down the route of employing so but i will need more and more support um, which hopefully will create some opportunities but also 
if it's a franchise we, we do go down, the people in each of the regions will need support as well. All those things I've mentioned above. And I want the core group, this, this kind of team of experts that we've, we've built to be the ones that get the benefit from that. So there's hopefully a lot of opportunities for you guys going forward. Um, as well as obviously as the Northern Fitter grows, there's more people to, to network with and to, to, and to uh, potentially collaborate with. But there's also things, I mean, I've, I've already touched on the extra services um, such as the peer group coaching. So the plan is that we would, all the groups would have a peer group coaching. So using Brenda and Karen example, there's some great opportunities for them. But that's just one example of the stuff we're doing. I, I want to do as much as I can with as many of you as possible. Um, and I appreciate that that looks different for everybody and different ways of doing it. But the overall, just would, I, I guess the point I want to make is I want to create more and more opportunities for you, your business, as we go forward, as, as, as the area has grown. Um, yeah, so in the quite early stages of, of that, of the discussions around franchising it, but um, very encouraging to start with and more to come. Um, the rest of this year and hopefully kind of into next year. Um, so that, you know, we will have more local groups, which you guys will be able to go into bigger, hopefully bigger Northern based events. We, I don't know, we've, we'll book out Ellen Road or something. Um, we'll fill it and get everyone there, something like that. So we'll, we'll uh, there's plenty of exciting things going on, but hopefully the main thing is that the potential for you guys um, and the uh, opportunities that, that will arise from that. Does anybody have any questions on that? I know it's a very generic overview of the of what kind of the future holds, and I will at kind of a bit later on talk about the kind of more immediate future. Um, but does that does that make sense? Has anyone got any questions about that kind of generally? No, good. I'm sure there'll be more questions about what we do um, moving forward. So I'm now going to set up the breakout rooms. So. The, the plan is we're going to go for about 15 minutes or so. Um, <laughs> thanks, Jeff. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so sorry, I just got Jeff sent me a private chat, which made me giggle. I'll tell everyone in a minute. But uh, we'll put you into the breakout rooms uh, for about four or so. Um, 15 minutes. What I would suggest is if you just talk about, you know, introduce yourself, if it's someone maybe you don't know particularly well. And just talk about what your plans are maybe for the next six weeks or so as we, as we kind of get to the end of the summer. I'm sure a lot of people are kind of September seeing that as an important time. But what are your plans? And just generally have a good conversation uh, with, with everyone. So um, I'm going to put you into the breakout rooms now. Um, so that sh you should be going in. Hello everyone, uh, good. I think everyone's back in now, which is great. Um, hope that was useful, hope you had some good conversations, um, good chat with people and I'm sure it's better than anything else, it's better than listening to me drone on for a few minutes, so um, all good. So I'm now gonna hand it over to, to Craig first. Um, so Craig from Stone King, I, I'm sure many of you do know Craig from, from the group, um, he's gonna introduce um, Stone King, and also then his, his colleague Julia as well. So, uh, Craig, I'm okay for you to take over. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, mate. Is Julie? Oh, Julie's there. Sorry, I was Julie's just checking yep. all the little celebrity square boxes. I can see Julie <laughs> right in the middle, which is good. Um, yeah, thanks for allowing us the opportunity today, Mike. We just for everyone's knowledge, I think we've been Northern Affinity Partners since September, October time last year. So we weren't part of the original cohort, but we joined fairly early on, I think, 
um, October time last year. And I, sorry, I'll introduce myself formally. I'm Craig Vince. I'm head of HR consultancy and a partner at Stone King. And Stone King is a law firm. So my role is quite unique within the law firm in, in that we do HR consultancy within a law firm and we, we sell our services through the law firm. So slightly unique model in, in terms of the approach to HR. Um, I'd fathom a guess that our company is the oldest within the Northern Affinity. Stone King um, became a Bath Business Attorney of Law in 1785 uh, when we launched in Bath. Um, and then in 1832, we moved into offices at 13 Queen Square in Bath, where we still are, which just beforehand um, was also the home of Jane Austen, those offices, and we're still in those offices today. So it's got a very, yeah, very long history in terms of, in terms of Stone King and who we've been operating with. And our first client was an independent school and they're still a client now. Um, so they're certainly our longest client as well. We, more in the more recent past, Stone King has developed into a, into a national law firm. So in 1990, we moved to London and then 20, 2007 into Cambridge. And then we opened the Leeds office um, in City Square in 2016. So we're fairly new to the, the Yorkshire market and have an, an office here for want of a better term. We've, we're in the Pince and Masons building, uh, for those of you that know that in, in City Square. And then we also opened a Birmingham office in 2018. So that, that confirmed our you know, full national presence as a law firm. Um, and obviously law firms come in all different shapes and sizes and we're, we're a fairly small law firm. We employ just over 250 people. So we're not you know, one of your big multinational law firms by any means. We've got a very focused ethos in the terms of the way we work with clients and the way we, you know, obviously, you know, the way we employ people. Um, you know, we're very focused in terms of our core values and we're very conscious of the type of employer we are as well. Um, so we, you know, we do a lot of work in relation to that and sharing our, our skills and expertise with, uh, with our clients in the right way. Um, just a few of the things I want to mention, we have a very strong CSR ethos as well. So all of us, are, we have to do CSR. Obviously we want to do it, but we do CSR within our local communities as well. So as well as doing our day-to-day -day roles, many of us are governors or trustees of charities or you know, volunteer at soup kitchens and um, you know, work in museums on a weekend as part of our CSR activity as well. So um, the main thing I'm trying to get across is obviously that because we're a law firm, obviously it's a very different model to, to many of you in the room. And, it's not, we're not a big, nasty, evil corporation type law firm. We're a very, very client friendly focused law firm. Um, we, yeah, we also have a, found, a charitable foundation as well, which we operate separately in terms of as a separate entity. And uh, many of us work with the, with the Stone King Foundation as well as working within the law firm. So lots of good things in terms of the ethos of our, our company and the type of law firm we want to be. We, we have a sector based approach. Um, so we work within charity, education, private client and the business sector, obviously the business sector operation, hence our involvement in relation, you know, with Northern Affinity. Uh, we work with, you know, very, you know, lots of SMEs right up to some larger national companies as well. But in, in terms of our involvement in, in Northern Affinity, you know, I think the SME market in terms of the people who want to work with in various practices is, is what we're is what we're aiming for because that's a, you know the type of organization we, that we like to work with um as i said my role is head of hr consultancy I, i'm based in the leeds office um and you know hr and the hr and employment function is very central to what we do in leeds but we work across lots and lots of different disciplines as well i think we cover everything you'd maybe expect a law firm to cover excluding personal injury perhaps so we have dedicated teams for corporate and commercial, commercial property, residential property, family law, procurement, dispute, dispute resolution, many more, and certainly, last but not least, immigration as well, uh, which is where, where Julie comes in. So, yeah, in, in, terms of, you know, in terms of raising our profile and raising our brand uh, locally, it'd be great. Uh, I'm connected with most of you, I think, but obviously Julie and I would love to connect with you on LinkedIn as well. Julie's a big LinkedIn fan and advocate. So yeah, please feel free to connect with us afterwards. And I think yeah, it also be care enough to 
so we're kind enough to follow the firm on LinkedIn as well. With there's endless, you know, there's, there's endless webinars and resources and updates that we're sharing that you know I think would be of value to yourselves, hopefully, and potentially some of your clients. Um, and today, obviously, because we have so many disciplines, we, we could have talked about lots of different things, but um, we, we thought that you know, immigration and the model in terms of Brexit moving forward would be would be of interest to you and. Um, and I will hand over to Julie to tell you more about. Obviously, Julie, if you want to say more about the firm, please do so. But if there's anything, if there's nothing else, if you can move on to immigration and Brexit. Craig, I'm so impressed with your knowledge of Stone King um, because I had no idea on those dates. So I won't say anything else about the firm, but that's very impressive. Very. Um, I'm actually based in the Cambridge office, but um, I run our National Immigration Service. And um, I'm from Rosendale, which I was just saying to Mike, I'm so excited about because it's on the news today because it's in the lockdown, which is not the most exciting thing, but it's such a small place. It's never in the news. So, um, yeah, that's very exciting. Um, so immigration, Brexit, um, uh, all a little bit odd because it was supposed to be the focus of this year. And, um, and I should say I'm a complete and utter immigration nerd. So forgive me, I get overexcited about immigration. Um, but it was supposed to be the focus of this year and then COVID came along and just took the limelight and, um, and now none of us are talking about Brexit and yet it's still happening and it's still there looming um, at the end of this year. So I'm, I'm really interested because I don't um, know anybody here. Um, it, does anybody employ any European nationals? Any hands up for that? Nobody employ any European nationals. Does anybody think they might be affected by Brexit? No. So, so this is just a, a bit of a, a general information then for you. And if there's anything you want to throw at me um, through just general interest, but um, hopefully then you'll be quite unaffected. I won't ask you whether you voted for Brexit or not, because that's a bit scary. Um, I think, Julie, I think for a lot of people, it would be that whilst a lot of the businesses might not be directly impacted themselves, as in whether it's employing people or, or whatever, it's that the people they work with and having that knowledge and um, information to be able to speak about it and, and experience what is really useful for a lot of people. I know it definitely is for myself. Yeah, absolutely. And there's, and there's lots of situations where we may not be directly affected, but suddenly because of the changes, a, a consequence may be that something happens within your business that you weren't actually expecting. Um, and I think a few people have approached me about that. And um, so the important point is that for European nationals, as with us when we go on holiday, we are able to move freely and we're able to do that under the current law. Um, and we've all taken advantage of that for many years. So we can just pop over to France or, you know, we could have done, popped over to Spain and popped back, um, but not anymore. Um, and that's because of COVID, but we could freely move and um, we were able to take advantage of that that still exists because we're in this transition period. So even though we're no longer in the European Union, we have this transition for European nationals. So there's this kind of interim period that we're in right now. But what that means is that by the end of this year, on December 31st, the transition period is going to end. And so European nationals will then be treated the same as any other foreign national. Now that's important if you think about times when you might have been to hospital, um, you might have a parent in a care home, um, you think about, I don't know, who cleans your children's um, school, you know, you'll often see Polish cleaners around. And we really rely on European nationals to fill many areas where there's a shortage in, in, in roles. So cleaners, carers, nurses, and actually even teachers. Um, if you have a think about teachers in your local school, you may well think of some teachers who are from the European Union, particularly language teachers. And, and we've been able to fill roles within our, our different occupations by European nationals coming in. It's, it's one of the basic areas. Now that won't be possible from next January. And what that means is that any European national is gonna be treated exactly the same as an international, nas international individual um, moving forward. So if you've got an American national or a French national, they will be treated the same and they'll need to get sponsorship. So if you were thinking that you needed to employ somebody from the European Union, you would need to have a sponsorship license. You wouldn't just be able to get them in, even if it was just for a short period of time. 
And so the consequences of that are quite vast. It, you know, if, if you think about, so at the Stone King, we act for many faith-based organizations. And you think about the nuns, if you ever come into contact with nuns, they're often European nationals. They won't be able to move freely anymore. Your priest might be Polish. He won't be able to move freely. So the impact is actually really quite great in all walks of life. And so anybody who is a European national who's currently in the UK will be able to stay and they just need to register on a scheme. So if you know any European nationals, it's really, really important that they've done that because the deadline to do that is, the, is next year, July. So by the end of June, they must have registered. Any European national must have done that who's currently in the UK. But moving forward, any European national who wants to come into the UK from January next year will need to be sponsored. And that means additional fees, it means that they've got to pay for, well, employer has got to pay for the sponsorship license, for the certificates of sponsorship, and the individual then will have much greater costs because at the moment they can literally just come, look for a job, they can come study. So all the different ways in which you can come to the UK, it just won't be possible for European nationals. So what we're saying to businesses is have a think, do you have anybody within your organization who is a European national, who is related to a European national, who might have a spouse who's a European national? We need to protect all of these individuals and they need to be aware of the settlement scheme because they need to register on the settlement scheme in order to secure their status here in the UK. And then within your strategic planning, your workforce planning, if you're thinking you're in an area where you might, for example, need software developers or something like that, and you may normally recruit within Europe, you won't be able to do that in the future. You will have to have a sponsorship license and European nationals will be treated exactly the same as any other foreign national. And that, in a nutshell, is the impact of Brexit on people movement. Anybody got any questions? One question I had, Julie, you mentioned the sponsorship license. Um, if someone wants to get that, is, I assume there's a cost as well as a time to that, to businesses. Is it, is it high? Is it what's involved? Yeah, so the sponsorship license is actually, it's not that expensive, I don't think, for, for a home office application. It's 536 pounds for a small, medium-sized company or a charity. So even charities need to apply for this as well. Um, for a larger business, it would be double that price, um, but that's over 250 employees. So ordinarily it's 536. So if you think about um, all of the state schools in the UK, nearly all of them are registered charities and they all have to hold a sponsorship license if they need to sponsor anybody. We have a massive shortage of physics teachers, maths teachers, so we have to sponsor teachers to come into our state schools in order to work and um, so most organizations will need to have a sponsorship license if they've got any number of employees and um, moving forward it's not that expensive it lasts for four years and then you can renew it it's it's more around the compliance issues you just need to make sure that you're on top of it and one of the problems with immigration law is that it changes all the time so it's really important that you stay on top of it and you know what you're doing oh we've got a question in is a sponsorship license per person or per company? Thanks, Kate. Um, the sponsorship license um, is per company. So the £536 is what the company would pay. And then you would need to, per individual that you want to sponsor, you would need to get a certificate of sponsorship. And the cost of that is £199 per person. There are then additional costs. Um, you have to pay the immigration skills charge which is something that the government introduced about 18 months ago, um, which is a levy that's placed on an employer for the benefit of sponsoring somebody. Um, and you also have to pay the immigration health surcharge, which has been in the news a lot lately, um, because all sponsored workers have to pay the immigration health surcharge, which is £400 per year that they're here. So um, if I use the example of an NHS nurse, they want to come to the UK to work in the NHS. They will be paid on the usual band, so they might start on 23,000, something like that. They can come in, but they have to pay, the employer would have to pay the immigration skills charge, even though there's not enough nurses in the UK to employ, because we don't have enough British nurses. And then the nurse would have to pay the immigration health surcharge for herself and her partner and her children, even though she's on an NHS wage, 
and she's working for the NHS, she has to pay that as well as national insurance. Judy, do you think there's, there's just there's a huge underestimation in terms of the Brexit and the impact on business? Do you think people are actually thinking, and you said people should be planning for it, do you think that is actually happening or is it just a huge variety between? I think that um, I think larger organisations are aware of the impact and um, the government's been really clear that any organisation should apply for a sponsorship licence, which is really interesting because normally they're anti-immigration. But the Home Office have come out and said, if you even think you might need to apply for this licence. So for the first time, really, they've been very directive in terms of you need to do this. I think with smaller companies who are looking to grow, I think that's where the impact will be felt. And, and of course, we've got COVID in the mix now where it's, it, we're, we're going to go through a really difficult times economically over the next 24 to 48 months. Um, and I think the pressures on workforce and shortages in workforce are really going to be keenly felt. You know, in, I, I'm in Cambridge, in East Anglia, it's going to be felt massively within the farming industry. It's going to be felt within... Um, industrial cleaners, different pockets, I think, it's going to be felt quite significantly. Yeah, because you mentioned teachers, and um, I think last last year, I think there's 5,500 te new teachers came in from the EU, and obviously they can come in, and, you know, teaching is an area where there's, you know, shortage occupation, so that, that talent pool is just shrinking and shrinking for lots of us in terms of, uh, well, you know, lots of all types of organisations, but businesses as well. I think that's right. I, I used to be head of um, nursing at the Royal College of Nursing. And um, I, the, for me, the biggest concern is the NHS and nursing, uh, because we fill a lot of our pockets of shortages with Portuguese and Spanish nurses. And that just won't be possible moving it forward from next year. It's going to be really tough. Yeah. There's a question from Fliss, sorry. Um, is there any impact to working with freelancers from overseas? I see that's a, that's a really good question because um, it will be very difficult for people to come in as freelancers. So um, if we look at the immigration rules as they stand, so we don't know 100% how the rules are going to change from January. Um, it would be nice to know, but it's not been confirmed yet. But at the moment, we have different tiers of sponsorship. And tier one of sponsorship is for entrepreneurs and investors. And that means you've got to have around about two to five million to invest in order to be self-employed. So if we're talking about freelancers, they wouldn't ordinarily fit into that, that bracket. Um, and so I don't think that we'll be seeing many people coming in as self-employed individuals moving forward. What about if they're still in their home country and you work with them? So employment rules aside that would be okay from an immigration point of view because you're not looking at um and the, them needing a visa to come into the uk so it's not you're not talking about migration so you would be able to still use individuals your difficulty though Fliss, is when you want those individuals to perhaps come and spend some time at the company in for consistency or for agms or that kind of thing that's when you may fall into um tricky waters yeah okay thanks Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions? Thumbs up from Stuart. <laughs> That's really good, Julie. Thank you very much. Um, I'm assuming if, you know, if anyone want, uh, does have any questions that come further down the line, whether it, you know, Craig yourself, I'm sure you're happy to, for people to contact you. Is that okay? Absolutely. Yeah. As Craig said, I'm always on LinkedIn. It's because I don't <laughs> do any work. I just spend my life on social media. <laughs> Yeah, and I, I do think you kind of touched on it. I think once um, we kind of, the impact starts to hit maybe back into this year, early next year, I think there's going to obviously, for, especially for a lot of smaller companies, there probably will be a lot of questions, won't there, that will come out. Um, people don't even know what they, they don't know what they don't know at the moment, I guess. Exactly. Well, thank you very much. Have you got anything else um, yourself or Craig? No, I think I've shared the, the, I know it's a bit of a cliche, but we've, if you follow us on LinkedIn, you might be a bit bored with two or three things that come through. But there's so much, there's so much goes on our LinkedIn because of because of the variety that we do and um, lots of webinars. You know, we do things I know nothing about about you know 
residential property in France. There was a webinar on that last week, which you know, I don't know who attended, but lots of people attended. We know we did a property webinar and 700 people attended on, res you know, there's, there's lots and lots of things on there. So I think that as well as connected with Julian, I think if you follow the Stone King general page, there will be things that will be of interest um, you know, to everyone within the group and potentially you know, your clients or you'll see that it'll impact on your clients as well. Yeah, and they're all free. I, that's important to know yeah. that, that all of this is free. And somebody just said about going on holiday to France, which is an interesting one. Are we going to need visas? There's got to be separate agreements with all of the European countries, which we've not got yet. So it may well be that we'd need to get a visa to go to Portugal, especially if Boris Johnson keeps annoying different countries by setting up quarantine rules. <laughs> That's thanks, great. Thank, thanks. thank you, both of you. Thank you very much, Julie, for, for joining us, and thank you, Craig. Um, so I'm going to go back um, to, to what I was doing. So I'm going to kind of go a little bit more now about um, the Northern Affinity as we um, move forward from, especially from September. I think probably most people know that the next few weeks a little feel a bit like a holding period before for September, and um, it kind of sits nice, I guess, with. With the Northern Affinity coming to our uh, for end of the first year in back end of uh, well in early September. So, um, over the last few weeks, I've been working on putting together a document that really that kind of gives everyone clarity on what what the Northern Affinity is and what it what it isn't. Just as importantly, um, so that that's been something that's I've been um, going to and from with for, for several months now and. Um, and getting feedback and various other things. And I, and I, I was very uh, conscious that I wanted to make it really, really clear as we move forward, because like I said, we're coming towards the end of the first year. And I, I'm sure I've said to all of you on an individual basis that the first year was, a lot of it would be kind of trial and error to a certain extent. We would we'd try things, things would work, wouldn't work. Now, uh, I d certainly didn't anticipate a, a, a global pandemic in our first year, but, um, situation is what it is and um i do think that you know especially in the early days of that we you know people got a lot from from the group and and a lot of a lot of people helping which was fantastic um so this document is now pretty much finished um fliss th thank you for doing make it look pretty um Gemma made my words make sense um so, uh, so them two, I uh, really said thank you to both of them and, and um, I'm going to be getting that out to everybody um, early next week um, so you can have a real look at But I wanted to kind of pick out some of the highlights, I guess, um, right now just to, to go through it and obviously if anyone's got any questions about that, uh, more than happy to take it, whether it's now on the chat or you want to give me a call, more than happy to, to do whatever works for everyone. Um, so yeah, so one of the things I wanted to kind of cover what the Northern Affinity is and what it, what it isn't. Um, the main things for me is it's, it's about bringing together like-minded people. Um, you know, the people in this group, people who are wanting to get, take their business, take what they do and, and move forward. It, the key in what we do is it's about su supporting you and it's promoting collaboration. They're, they're the big things for me and that, that's something I can do, but all of you within the group can do, and I know I have been doing, which, is, which has been fantastic. One of the big things I'm, I'm very keen on is providing people with a, with a platform to showcase your knowledge, your experience, um, your expertise, whether it's in forums like, like this, whether it's the how-to events that I've mentioned, the general monthly events, the live videos, whatever it might be. I, I, I'm a big believer, and that's a, a really good way of, of promoting who you are in, the, in your business. So that's what I want to keep doing, but also take it kind of to the next level um, with that. It's an area for people to share experience and expertise as well, which I know you all do, whether it's again in, in bigger group forums or on an individual one-to-one -one basis. I know a lot of you do that, which is, which is fantastic and really help and support each other. And the last thing is the, this, this group of people who, who are happy to make introductions to each other but they, they do it because they've got the confidence and the trust in the people, other people in the group. It, that's, that's really important. And that's kind of, kind of flipping that on its head, something that the Northern affinity isn't. It isn't about someone passing a, a introduction to someone just for the sake of it, just because they're in this group. That's, that's not what it's about. I want to give people the opportunity to show 
they've got the experience, they've got the expertise, they've got the knowledge, and therefore people feel happy to do so. Um, you know, I, I hope she doesn't mind saying, I, I, I am more than happy to, to introduce Fliss to anybody because of the work she's done for me. And, um, and that's what I want other people in the group, you know, to feel that, that confidence as well. And, and with other people where, like I said, there's, there's millions and ones different ways of doing that and different platforms and, and we'll continue to do that. Um, so yeah, one of the things, again, the Northern affinity, and it's not about just giving things away for free as well within people in the group. It, that's not what, it, you know, we're all in business. We're all trying to, to grow our businesses. It's not about doing that. It, it, that's not what the group is about. Helping each other, yes. Providing support, yes. But it's not just about giving stuff away. As I mentioned, it's not about passing referrals just for the sake of it. And even it's not just about turning up to events just again for the sake of turning up. It might not be right for you. You know, we, we do this meeting on a monthly basis because we want it to be worthwhile on a monthly basis. It's not just to turn up every single week to every single thing. Uh, the how-to events will be a great example of this, that with certain subject matters that just are not relevant to you, but hopefully there'll be enough, there'll be many that will be relevant and you'll get plenty of um, value from that. So it's, it's, it's about picking and choosing for you. It's, you know, it's not my responsibility to do that for, for you. You all know you're all, most of us are adults in the group, so you can you can choose that for yourself. So that it, it's kind of important that that is. And like I said, this, this is going to be all in this document. So one of the big changes we're going to make um, differences is we're going to, as, as you know, at the moment, we kind of got one way of connecting with the Northern Affinity and you're all uh, partners within the group. Um, we're, going to, we're going to split that between we're going to have partnerships and we're going to have memberships. So the partnerships will be pretty much what we're doing now, most of the stuff plus maybe the added stuff that I'm going to talk about in a minute. Um, but maybe spending a bit more time on doing that, those things. So more of the live videos, um, more of the training events, um, more opportunities to speak at the monthly event, whatever it might be, um, we're going to do more of. And we're, we're going to cap that group at the moment at 50. Now, I'm not saying that's going to never change in the future. I don't know. But I think it's the right amount of people based on what I've got from the last year where I feel I can both myself and the Northern Infinity can commit to giving you the time so that whether that's physically the time, whether it's on social media, whatever it might be, um, feel that's a, that's a good number. And then there is a, there's another group of people who maybe don't want to get involved with the things like that, which again is absolutely fine, but do want to come along to whether it's meetings like this or the local get togethers that I mentioned. So we'll, we'll, we're kind of going to split it up and all the details is going to be sent across to you soon. Like I said on this and it, giving people the opportunity and just make it a bit more, I guess it makes it a bit more bespoke for everybody as, as well. Um, another new thing I'm going to be very keen to do is celebrate success. Um, and success can mean many different things. Um, I know there's so much that goes on between the people in the group, whether it's collaborations, people passing introductions and we, and I, I don't really talk about that, whether that's again on in this meeting, whether it's on email or whatever it may be. I want to do more of that. So we're going to be doing various things on that. We're going to have a partner of the month um, award and we're going to, and um, that partner, we're going to feature more on social media, in email marketing, that type of thing. So it's a chance for people again to, to elevate themselves. Um, and it's going to be based on you know, work that you've done together, how you've helped people, introductions, all that, that kind of stuff. Um, so again, it's not, I appreciate it's not something I've talked about enough really in the first year, but we are going to do, do that moving forward. Um, we've got the get togethers, which uh, obviously I've already covered most of that. So I don't need to, to dwell on that too much. So we've got the local ones at the moment in three different areas, which are happening on consecutive Fridays, first, second and third of the month. The how to events again, starting in, um, in August, sorry, with, with one, but the plan is probably on a, on a weekly basis um, from September, some, mid September, maybe. We're going to throw quite a bit in terms of the marketing on, on that as well and the how-to events um, get you know, help you again demonstrate your experience and knowledge. Um, it's going to be a big thing. And then we've got this monthly event. So the one thing that's probably going to change on the monthly event um, is that it will become a hybrid of both face-to-face -face and online. I appreciate that not everybody can make it to the venue. We may look at also kind of sharing it around different venues as well from, from September. Obviously, again, whatever happens with um, local lockdowns and areas and we kind of a bit out of our hands at the moment. But the plan moving forward is that we will have some people in the room, the people who can make it and want to come, 
but we'll also have people like you are now online as well. So if you can't make it face to face for whatever reason, you know, the, when your kids are off, off school or you've got a meeting in the afternoon, so you don't have time to get back, whatever it may be, we will, it'll kind of make no difference. Um, I think there's always a benefit of being face to face, but generally you could be the presenting remotely. You could be asking questions remotely, whatever it may be. That is the plan as we move forward. So it's, whilst it's obviously a kind of a reaction to the current situation, it's also works in a normal world because sometimes people just can't make the physical meeting. Um, so that's the, yeah, so we're, that's kind of the slight difference, I guess, to, to the monthly, monthly meeting. I've kind of touched on this enhanced support idea, you know, more of the videos, more of the, the, the stuff that we're doing. And I'll kind of, the, the document you get will, will detail that in, 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 uh, with more information, but really help try and promote you. Cause that's, for me, that's what I want. That's what I want to achieve. That's, that's my main aim is to, to support you guys, help you grow your business, build collaborations, get new customers, whatever it might be. Um, so the more support and there'll be things that we don't not doing now that I'm sure we'll be doing you know, this time next year, we will be doing. Um, and I'm always looking for ideas and feedback from you guys of what would work for you. Um, so please, you know, put that forward, but we'll, we'll be doing more and more and, and, and want to work with you as much as possible. I, I touched on earlier, the, the stuff, for example, I do the peer group support we do with, with, um, I'm going to do in Brenda and Karen, um, People like Phil Story has got, has got the web support. I want to do more and more of that type of stuff. And I know there's various conversations that I've been having about that. Um, and I plan to do more and more of that because going back to the what I discussed earlier about the, the kind of growth plans, I think there's going to be some real, really good opportunities actually for, for all of you in the, in the group. So um, as much as we can get on board that, the better. Um, and then finally, for me, ne next steps. So as I've, I've touched on already, I'll be sending through your document um, with all this and a little bit more next week. Um, for those, there is a number of people, Craig touched on it earlier actually, that are coming towards the end of the first 12 months, um, at the end of August, I believe it is. So you, you'll be kind of getting the relevant uh, invite to, to rejoin in, in September. Um, of, I, I will plan to speak to everybody on an individual basis over the next three or four weeks uh, before we go to that. Um, to kind of clarify any points that anyone's got. Um, if there's some questions that keep coming up, then we'll maybe do some sort of webinar again or whatever it might be. But you know, please, please do let me know when I send it through. But I do want to have as many one-to-one -one calls and meetings as possible. If I don't, obviously we'll be seeing a lot of you at the go local get-togethers, uh, lockdown um, excluding. So we'll, we'll hopefully be able to answer any questions there as well. And... Um, yeah, and then just the final thing for me is we'll, so I touched on earlier about moving the the August meeting to maybe early September. So the plan would be that the early September meeting would be a bit of a kind of a way of working day. Um, so rather than the normal format, we'll use it as a way of getting us all together and clarifying anything and making sure that everybody is really, really clear on how we can get the best out of all infinity as, as we move forward in the, the following 12 months. Um, and then we'll just do the normal meeting at the end of the month as, as, per, as per usual. So I appreciate I've thrown quite a lot of information at you and there will be more information next week, uh, but hopefully I've covered the uh, highlights of that. Does anybody have any questions or comments at this stage, as long as it's not too difficult? Jeff, do you want to... When you mentioned the two different sorts of ways of working with Northern Affinity yep. going, going forward, um, the process for which camp people want to be in, um, what if everybody wants to be in the same camp? Good question, Jeff. Is that the same question everyone's going to have? Because that's the one I was expecting. Um, so firstly, it'll become a little bit clearer um, once I send out the detail of what is involved in the two memberships, I think for people, so th there will be that. Now, um, what I want to get from that group is a group of people who are very bought into the ideas and what's part of that. So getting involved with the, the stuff we're doing and the collaboration and the and everything like that. And um, as we know, we are we have got more than fifty at the moment. Um, but there is a number of people who are less involved in things. So it probably just wouldn't suit them. Um, 
I, I having done the numbers myself, um, and obviously the fact that you guys are on the call to probably gives an idea about the people I'm thinking, um, as well as a few people can't make for obvious reasons, are the people who are, in, who are um, I can't think of the, the best word, um, who, who get what it's about and, and, and want to get from Northern Affinity. Um, and, that, and that doesn't necessarily mean, it doesn't have to be the people who are the most vocal. So not, maybe not always people like yourself, Jeff, um, who are, the, who are the, the very vocal on the WhatsApp group or whatever. It doesn't have to be people like that. Everyone contributes in different ways. Um, but I guess it becomes a bit of, for me, it would be a selection. Uh, I want the best people um, involved because it's, because we're all kind of, when you're in a group like this, you're all kind of depending on each other. And if you're, if you're putting the time into share stuff on social media for, for other people, or you're putting the time into offer your expertise, then it's kind of only fair that other people do it. And it, it might be in a different way to what say you do, Jeff, but you know, yourself and Pete and Fliss will all do things in different ways, but you're all contributing. And that, and that's the key. Um, I, and to be honest, Jeff, I, I'm not, not worried about it too much. Once I send out the details of what the two things involved, I think, um, I think naturally it will, it will settle right. But um, you know, we'll have that conversation on an individual basis with anybody who wants to have that conversation as well. Have I kind of answered your question there, Jeff? Hopefully. You have. I'm looking forward to seeing the document. But yeah, thanks for that. That was good. No worries, Jeff. Thank you. Um, has anybody else got any questions at this point? I feel like you're an advantage, Fliss, because you've seen the document. Because well, you did it. Um, but like I said, it will, it will be it will be out next week. Yep. So no more questions. Perfect. So I've either flummoxed you or um, answered all of them in, in what I was saying. One of the two. Um, so as I mentioned, um, thank you for everyone. Uh, pretty much on on the time. Amazingly on on time. Um, happy to do so. What the plan was originally to do the breakout, the second set of breakout rooms, which was on a one to one basis with people, a bit of a random one to one for ten minutes or so. Um, more, we'll, we'll still be doing that for anyone who wants to join, but obviously doing it at the end now. Um, so if you want, I'll kind of give everybody a. A minute or so who, who've got other things i know there's lots going on and sun and everything like that people want to get but if not if anyone else wants to stay um if we've got two or three people maybe we'll just stay as one big group if we've got a few we'll go into a one-to-one -one. so um thank you everybody um and generally i mean just kind of a, a, as we're coming towards the end of the first year as well thank you for everyone who's contributed so much um in the first year and as obviously some of the newer guys on today which is great to see um there's so many people who've, who've put so much in so i really do appreciate that um yeah thank you enjoy your weekend and hopefully i'll see many either staying on now i'll see many of you in the next few weeks at the local get togethers <clears throat> thanks michael cheers see you soon. cheers see you soon guys thank you, Pete. bye Thought for a second there, Michael, no one was going to leave, and then you'd, you'd sort of just like going, a massive one to one, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you'd be like, I sort of thought. <laughs> <laughs>